Hi everyone. I want to share today about karma and the true meaning of it. And I want to start by reading Siddhartha Gautama, the historical Buddha that we know of, his words from the Pali Canon speaking on karma. He says, beings are owners of their karma. We own our karma. Heirs of their karma. They originate from their karma. We originate from our karma. Are bound to our karma. Have karma as our refuge. It is karma that distinguishes beings as inferior and superior. So I invite you to come on this journey with me because in the West, we kind of hear about karma as you do good, something good will happen to you. You do bad, something bad will happen to you. Then there's all this confusion, right? Like why does bad things happen to good people? And why do good things happen to bad people? And all that, right? So to understand karma in the original Sanskrit term or kama used in Buddhism and Hinduism, formerly known as Sanatan Dharma, the eternal Dharma, the eternal truth, Karma first is tied in intimately and inseparably from reincarnation, right? And that's why Christians get so confused. Like people that doubt Christianity, they're like, well, why would God cause these people this harm? Or um, why did he, they die so young and didn't, because they don't understand karma. Because our karma, which Buddha says causes all things, has been with us since beginningless time, we're always creating new karma because anything you do with intent, whether you do the outward act or in your mind. So whether I slap somebody in the face or I have seething hate and I don't touch them, but I hope to God the worst thing happens to them, creating terrible karma. That's why Jesus Christ said, if you even think about another woman, you've committed adultery. He's just saying it's because the intent, right? The intent. That's why too, when he says, when Jesus said people come out and fast the Pharisees and they make themselves look all emaciated so they can get credit for fasting. So people are like, Ooh, they're doing good. He said they have their reward. That's why he said, go pray to your father in secret and he'll reward you openly. Or in the gospel, when the disciples asked Jesus, was this guy born lame because of his own sin or his parents' sin? So they understood that, right? Was he born lame because of his own sin that he committed before he was born or because of his parents' sin? So when they use the word sin in Christianity, same exact thing as karma, same exact thing. Um, so our karma, all the things that happen in your life that you're like, I didn't deserve that. Or maybe you did deserve it. Something great happens and you think I didn't deserve that. Or people are, why me? I didn't ask to be here. All of it is our karma. Every single thing. That's what Jesus is talking about. Every single thing is our karma. So liberation is getting free of these seeds. They call them seeds of samsara some scaras, little seeds you could think of them as, of karma. It's like a psychic DNA code. It makes up you, who you think you are. So in the Hindu tradition, there's para atman, which is the great soul. You could think of that as God in you, as Christ in you, as Krishna in you. Jeev atman is the little soul. That's who you think you are, your spirit that transmigrates to life, life to life realm to realm. So that's your karma. The Buddha talks about right there in the Pali Kana, if you were killing people, he said, your karma will probably lead you to get reborn in hell. But if you get reborn on earth, you're going to have a short life. He's like, if you refrain from hurting people, maybe you'll get reborn in heaven. But if you get reborn on earth, you'll have a long life. He said, if you hurt people, like slap them and stab them and stuff, if you get reborn on earth, you'll be born with lots of illness. If you don't, if you're very compassionate, you'll be born in good health, right? He said, if you envy people, you'll be born in a low position. If you don't envy people, you'll be born in a high position. Buddha talks about it always like in the negative first. Um, he talks about 
another one like you'll be born ugly or you'll be born beautiful based on I forgot the action that's based on. But so karma shows us that everything's happening according to law, right? So first of all, it's better to create good karma than bad karma, right? So we think compassionate thoughts, we do compassionate actions, that leads to more fortunate rebirth. And that's what the Buddhists teach too. They teach like in the Tibetan book of natural liberation through hearing, the Tibetan book of the dead, your aim when you die is to recognize the pure ground of awareness and get completely free. But if you can't, you wanna get the best rebirth possible, right? It's only common sense. If you have to be born and you're not totally liberated, you want either to go to heaven or a beautiful realm or the most conducive birth on earth to, to studying the Dharma, to liberation, to a place where the truth is found. So this is so pra important and practical because then we know that everything's, there's no accidents, no mistakes. Everything that's happening to us all the time is our karma, whether from past, whether from now. The only time you get completely free of karma is through unattached action, action without intent. That's why they talk about karma yoga in the East, dedicating the fruits of your action to God, to Krishna, to the guru. That would be doing action free of attachment, right? Which is a very difficult thing to do. You burn up karma through what? Through intense love and devotion through serve selfless service, through sadhanas such as kundalini yoga, other forms of yoga, breath of fire, creating the internal heat, even sauna, hot yoga, tapas, through what they call austerity, getting in extreme cold, doing penance, uh, praying on your knees, uh, anything like that, walking barefoot on pilgrimage. These things burn up seeds they burn up karma, right? So you want to burn it quicker than you create it. Um, mantra. So for me, I use what's called Ram Nam Japa, repeating the name of Ram. It burns up your karma of countless lifetimes. And you can feel it because as the karma burns up the seeds, the mind gets quieter and quieter. The spirit gets lighter and lighter. The things you attract into your life are different. Um, so that is, that's what our karma is. That's why Buddha is saying it's everything. Um, the only thing really outside of karma is the grace of the guru. And that's when a being that is liberated outside to time and space steps down with grace and helps take your karma, helps purify your karma. And that's what these great saints are doing all the time. That's what Jesus was doing when he was healing people. And he said, is it better for me to say, your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk. Because when he's doing that, he's taking their karma. That's why they're being healed. He's literally purifying them and taking it on himself. In India, the gurus do that all the time. When you feed them, they're eating your karma. They're consuming and transmuting it. Food has the power to do that. So I wanted to get in this extensive talk on it because understanding karma and reincarnation is really the only way that karma makes sense. And when you see the fuller scope of it, you can actually practice and apply the teachings deeper in your life. And it gives you a much deeper understanding of how and why things are taking place the way that they are. So I leave you with that. And Every de nothing is escapable from the law of karma. That's the thing that stinks and is good. So whether you litter on the ground, whether you pick up litter, whether you sit, you know, whatever you're thinking about someone, you're screwing them over or your intent, you're lying at work or you're not and you're super honest. Also realize all the good you do, you're getting credit for it. All of it. Nothing's hidden. Nothing's hidden. Everything you do is worth something.